Okay, today we're going to take a look at what affects the speed of a chemical reaction. Okay, so it's um, the first thing that we need to talk about is what we mean by the term kinetics. And kinetics refers to how fast something is moving. So for example, kinetic energy is the energy associated with something moving. So um, in this branch of chemistry, we're going to be focusing on um, kinetics or factors that affect how fast or how slow a reaction proceeds. Okay, so we also need to define the reaction rate of a chemical reaction, which is um, the change in the concentration of a reactant or product per unit time. And it's usually expressed as moles per liter seconds. Okay, and the concentration of a substance is also known as the molarity. And the formula for molarity is the moles um, divided by the volume. Okay, and the moles is the counting system that we use for um, substances that are very small at the atomic level, ions, molecules. And the units that we use is usually moles per liter. Um, and sometimes we'll use the, the capital M to represent the, the molarity or the concentration. Now, um, you have to also have an understanding of collision theory. And collision theory states that atoms, ions, and molecules, they have to collide. They have to smash into each other in order to react. So this diagram here is trying to show uh, molecule A colliding with molecule B in order for the reaction to happen. And there needs to be an effective collision. So they have to smash into each other with the right amount of energy and the right orientation in order for the reaction to happen. Otherwise, the reaction won't happen. And there, there are several factors that promote um, how effective a collision is. As I was mentioning, the collision orientation, which in this case means whether the, the, the particles collide head on as opposed to just side swiping each other. So the orientation of the molecules is going to determine whether the reaction will proceed. And um, the other factor is the energy, or what's known as the activation energy. So the activation energy is the energy that you need in order to um, have the reaction proceed. And this diagram here is trying to demonstrate this, this idea. This is called a potential energy diagram. Um, and this first diagram is for an exothermic reaction. Um, and then what this is trying to show here is that the potential energy of the reactants, this flat part here, is higher than the potential energy of the products. And then this hump on this line represents the activation energy. So this energy needs to, you need to have this amount of energy in order for the reaction to proceed. Now for um, an endothermic reaction, um, which is a reaction where energy is absorbed, the potential energy of the reactants is less than the potential energy of the products. Okay, So you need to be familiar with the general shapes of these diagrams, and it's basically just trying to describe whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So we need to define a couple of other terms um, that we introduced. So we've been using this word energy. Energy is defined as the ability to do work. And we measure energy in joules, J, or kilojoules, Kj. And there are different forms of energy. There's chemical energy. There's electromagnetic energy. There's mechanical energy. There's thermal energy. Okay, so in chemistry, we're typically talking about chemical energy, the energy in the bonds. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, um, exothermic uh, means that heat is released in a reaction, which means that the temperature is going to increase. And an endothermic reaction is the heat is absorbed, so the temperature is going to decrease. Um, we also need to define this term temperature because um, students have some misconceptions around them. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter. And then um, the other thing that we need to talk about is something called the heat of reaction, and that's the change in the heat content. So as a reaction proceeds from reactants to products, there's going to be some change um, in the amount of heat, and that's called the heat of reaction. Um, so it's defined as the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants, 
or PE of the products minus PE of the reactants. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that reactant particles must have to form something called an activated complex. And an activated complex is a temporary unstable arrangement of the atoms. Um, so the main thing that you have to understand about activation energy is that it's the minimum amount of energy that's needed in order for the reaction to proceed from reactants to products. And there are several factors that affect how fast a reaction or how slow a reaction will proceed. The nature of the reactants, and what I mean by that is whether it's a solid, a liquid, or gas. Gases are more um, reactive than solids or liquids because the particles are moving all over the place. The concentration. So how much of these particles uh, there are in a certain amount of volume. The surface area. So whether something is spread out over a large surface area or if it's clumped up together. So things that are spread out um, are going to react faster than if they're clumped up together. The temperature is also going to affect. Generally, um, things are going to react at higher temperatures than lower temperatures. A catalyst, which is something that will speed up a reaction, and an inhibitor is something that's going to slow down a reaction. And it's important to note that catalysts are not consumed in the reaction. They just lower the activation energy. Okay, so, they, so catalysts are enzymes that increase the reaction rate by lowering the activation energy. Um, and this graph is trying to show what an uncatalyzed reaction, which is the blue part here. So an uncatalyzed reaction has a higher activation energy, a higher hump. And substances that have a catalyst have a lower um, activation energy. So catalysts are going to make the reaction go faster by lowering the activation energy. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some, some problems that you're going to work on um, in this area. Thank you.